Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I'm Dr. Faria Saleem and today we are going to start with varicose veins. So you have studied about uh, DVT that is deep venous thrombosis. Okay, now we will start with the varicose veins. Varicose vein is the one that is dilated vein. And basically the when the vein gets dilated, the valves are not working properly. So it does not prevent the backflow of blood which is mandatory so when such veins lose their elasticity they become elongated torturous and their fibrous tissue is being replaced by tunica media so the basic anatomy of the veins are deranged the physiology is also deranged because now the veins are more dilated and their valves are not working properly okay so what are the predisposing factors Predisposing factors are those factors which may lead to such condition uh, earlier than possible. So the first predisposing factor is hereditary, that it can be passed through genetics. The next one is that females are more prone to get varicose veins as compared to males. Also, one of the most pre, uh, important predisposing factors is pregnancy. Another is age, that is old age increases the chance of getting varicose veins. Okay, so uh, if a person is obese or is in long sitting or standing position, then also the chances of getting these varicose veins increases. Also, the pressure is, uh, the factor of pressure is also there. Okay, so uh, varicose veins of the legs. Let's study about this. When valves in the anastomosing veins become deep and superficial leg veins become incompetent, so uh, the venous pressure in the superficial veins rises okay in the long term when these veins they stretch and become chronically dilated because the superficial veins are less well supported by surrounding tissue than the deeper ones such areas show the skin as varicose veins so basically uh, the veins uh, superficial veins of our uh, arms and legs they are obviously less supported with skin as compared to the deeper veins so when the superficial veins get dilated they can be easily shown or easily seen from the skin so these are called as varicose veins okay so uh, the most important varicose veins are saphenous veins and the anterior tibial veins okay and what happens is that they cause aching and fatigue of the legs especially during long periods of standing okay. let me show you a diagram okay so you can see these varicose veins they are on the tibia region and you can see that they are very visible on the skin and on the right side you can see there is a normal vein with proper valves and below it there are varicose veins and you can see that the valves are not closing properly so it does not prevent the backflow of blood so what are hemorrhoids hemorrhoids okay so we have just studied about the varicose veins of the legs now these veins these dilated veins they can occur on different parts of our body if they occur on the legs they are called as varicose veins if they occur on the junction of rectum and anus it leads to hemorrhoids okay so what happens is that uh, if a person is suffering from chronic constipation or uh, there is increased pressure in the pelvis area at the end of pregnancy it leads to distortion or um, dilated veins in the junction of rectum and anus region slight bleeding may occur when the stool is being passed and it may lead to anemia okay so let's see the diagram of hemorrhoids you can see a, a slightly large internal hemorrhoid and an external hemorrhoid so basically uh, what happens is when the stool passes through this area through the anus these uh, veins they get damaged because they are already dilated it has a very thin epithelium uh, very sensitive epithelium so when the stool uh, you know passes through the anus 
it may cause bleeding from these internal or external hemorrhoids and normally uh, if the constipation is uh, treated and uh, it gets better then there is no need of surgical remover it reverts back but if um, the constipation problem is not corrected then surgical removal of hemorrhoid might be necessary okay then is the scrotal varicocele so if these uh, varicose veins are present in the testicle region this leads to scrotal varicocele let's read from the paragraph each spermatic cord is surrounded by a plexus of veins that become varicose especially in men whose work involves sp uh, standing for a longer period of time so this basically occurs in men uh, who are standing for a longer period of time okay so if now the fourth location we are studying about if these varicose veins they occur in the esophageal region then it leads to esophageal varices and it might rupture which leads to potentially fatal hemorrhage okay so we have studied about four types of varicose veins the first one was the varicose veins of the legs the second one was hemorrhoids which was at the junction of anus and rectum the third one was scrotal varicocele which were the varicose veins of the testicle region and the fourth one was the esophageal varices which was varicose veins of the esophagus okay let's study about the tumors of blood and lymph vessels okay now angiomas what are angiomas always remember that when a word ends with oma like angioma or uh, hemangioma that means that this oma means that it is a benign tumor okay like sarcoma but if it ends with sarcoma like uh, you can see that uh, basal cell carcinoma okay that means that sarcoma words show that it is a malignant tumor not a benign one always remember this okay so angiomas are benign tumors of either blood vessels or lymph vessels if the uh, there is a benign tumor of blood vessels it is called as hemangioma and if it is a benign tumor of lymph vessels it is called as lymphangiomas so uh, the lymphangiomas are very rare so normally if we talk about angiomas we take it as we are talking about hemangiomas okay okay so hemangiomas they are not true tumors but they are similar or you can say that they are uh, sufficiently similar to be classified as such okay so what happens is uh, in hemangioma is that there is excessive growth of blood vessels which are present in uncharacteristic manner and they are interspread with collagen fibers okay so just uh, keep in mind a picture of hemangioma that there is excessive growth of blood vessels and it is interspread with collagen fibers let's see a picture of hemangioma okay this is a true picture of hemangioma there is excessive blood vessels and it is filled with collagen fiber okay so what are capillary hemangiomas excess capillary growth interspread with the collagen in a localized area it makes a dense plexus like network of tissue it is same as that of hemangioma the only difference is that there is excessive capillary growth which is interspread with collagen fibers okay each hemangioma is supplied by only one blood vessel and if it is thrombosed then the hemangioma atrophies and disappear Uh, if you can recall thrombosis means presence of blood clot so if a blood clot appears in the hemangioma obviously the blood clot will reduce the blood supply later on completely diminishing the blood supply which would lead to atrophy and disappearance of that hemangioma capillary hemangiomas are usually present at birth and are seen as purple or red mole or may be called as birth mark you people might have heard about birthmark a lot of time so that birthmark is basically that capillary hemangioma they may be quite small at birth but grow at an alarming rate in the first few months keeping pace with the growth of child after first to first to 3 years atrophy may begin 
and that mean atrophy means that it will uh, it will lead to reduction in the size and after 5 years about 80% of the tumors have disappeared let me show you a picture of it okay as you can see that initially the baby had a very small birthmark comparatively we it's not that small but comparative as compared to the later on picture it, it seems smaller but with the passage of time as the baby grows uh, this hemangioma also kept on increasing but remember that after 5 years this will reduce in size cavernous hemangiomas blood vessels larger than capillaries they grow in excess of normal needs in the localized area and are interspread with collagen fibers so these are cavernous hemangiomas are those hemangiomas in which the capillaries are larger uh, the blood vessels are larger than capillaries they are again dark red in color and may be present in skin but they are most common in liver okay edema okay uh, you must have heard about the word edema this is basically accumulation of tissue fluid it leads to swelling and it might be superficial or deep site of edema so basically uh, when the edema occurs it might be in the limbs uh, you know in the hands in the uh, ankle region so uh, there are different types of edema the for the one we are talking about is pitting edema the word pitting means that when we press on the skin it makes a pit and the skin remains there after even a long period of time that indentation remains there because there is tissue fluid excess tissue fluid over there okay the sites at which the edema is normally observed is influenced by or dictated by gravity and the position of the individual if a person is standing for a longer period of time then the edema might be seen in the lower limbs beginning in the feet or if the patient is on the bed rest then edema might be seen in the sacral region sacral region is basically the area below the spine okay so if if the edema is dependent on the position uh, of the patient then this is called as dependent edema because it is dependent on the position of the patient okay another type of edema is called as pulmonary edema this occurs because of cardiac failure or inflammation of the lungs okay so or uh, in case of uh, excessive infusion of iv fluids okay so what happens in pulmonary edema is that uh, basically there is excessive accumulation of fluid in the tissue spaces and in the alveoli so obviously the alveoli cannot contract or relax properly and it will not uh, cause that efficient exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide okay so this leads to dyspnea that is breathlessness because there is lack of oxygen in the body cyanosis that is blueness of the skin and coughing up expectoration of frothy sputum that frothy sputum might comes out from the patient's mouth so we have talked about pitting edema in which there is indentation in the skin when firm pressure is applied we have also talked about dependent edema the edema which is dependent on the position of the patient and we have talked about the pulmonary edema which occurs because of cardiac failure or inflammation of the lungs now we will talk about causes of edema okay so causes of edema might be increased hydrostatic pressure as you can see in the picture okay this a1 this a picture this shows normal blood flow there is uh, capillary below blood capillary or blood vessel above it is the tissue space you can see that there is normal level of plasma proteins in the blood capillary or the blood vessel and normal fluid content in the tissue space okay but what happens if there is decreased plasma osmotic pressure if there is reduced plasma proteins in the blood vessel region this area then what happens is you can see that the difference between a and b is that in a there are more plasma proteins which is denoted by p in the blood vessel region and in b diagram there are less plasma proteins so we if you can recall your previous knowledge that 
proteins or the solutes they attract solvent if there is reduced amount of solute it will attract less solvent so what happens in case of decreased plasma proteins in the blood vessel is that reduced amount of water will come back into the blood vessel and more water will accumulate in the tissue space leading to edema now let's come to the diagram c okay you can see in this diagram in a and b that some of the water is escaping into the lymphatic region this green part green circular region on the right side is the lymphatic region some of the water is also being regulated by passing into the lymphatic region but if there is uh, deranged or you can say that damaged lymphatic system because of any carcinoma or any uh, or removal of the lymph nodes then these water molecules would not pass into the lymphatic region leading to again accumulation of fluid in the tissue space leading to edema okay there is another condition in which there is increased capillary permeability increased capillary permeability means that more of water molecule and proteins are passing through the capillaries as compared to normal that is the permeability of the capillaries is increased in this d diagram you can see that more of the plasma proteins have passed into the tissue space and all of the almost all of the water molecules are into the tissue space that will lead to again tissue uh, again accumulation of tissue fluid because normally the water should come back some of the water should come back into the blood vessel region but in this case it is not coming back thus it will lead to tissue fluid accumulation so we have talked about four scenarios the first one a part was normal the b one was there was reduced plasma proteins in the blood vessel region c was that there was damaged lymphatic system and the delta one was that there was increased capillary permeability all of these three causes will lead to accumulation of tissue fluid thus leading to edema okay so we have covered varicose veins today uh, we talked about hemangiomas capillary hemangiomas and varicose veins of the legs and esophageal uh, versus and then we talked about edema and the sites of edema the causes of edema i hope that it is clear just go through it from your book and then we will talk about ascites in the next lecture thank you so much